Screenplay by Ilya Cerovic. Directed by Narcisa Darijević. Romans have appeared in 5th century before Christ in a remote village and have built the biggest empire of their time, thus leaving a permanent trace in history. At the end of 3rd and the beginning of 4th century Anno Domini, emperors born on what is Serbian territory today ruled this huge empire. Marcus Aurelius Valerius Maximianus, born near Sirmium around about 250. Flavius Valerius Constantinus Chlorus from around Nisus. Gaius Galerius Valerius Maximianus, born in Gamzigrad. Valerius Licinianus. And Flavius Valerius Constantinus, or Constantine the Great, born in Nisus, have made their native land the center of the Imperia within several decades only, and have built cities, palaces, villas, and other buildings equally valuable to those from previous centers of antique empire. Some of these buildings are well known, others have just been discovered, and many more are still waiting for the explorers. In the summer of 2000, experts from Archaeological Institute of Belgrade and National Museum Niche came to Mediana to unveil another piece of exciting history of Roman Empire, as they have done in previous years. The story of Mediana, lavish outskirts of antique Niche, Imperial estate with luxurious residency and highly organized economy begins with the Tetrarch period. <music> Helen of lower origin gave birth to Constantinus in the city of Nisus where he was brought up and later ornamented the city magnificently. This is what anonymous biographer of Constantine the Great recorded. You may well be the judge of whether he was right. In Central Part, there was a luxurious villa with peristyles, small nymphia and thermal springs in the vicinity. Westward, there was a complex of estate buildings, manufacture quarter, and choreum, that is granary. The remains of water tower of a very particular appearance lay south of the villa on a hill nearby. Luxurious buildings of solid material and with pillars were wrapped in marble decorations, mosaics and frescoes as it suits the dwellings of an emperor. Yet, most of the buildings of Mediana remain lying just beneath the ground surface, resisting the pressure of a modern city, on whose way it unwillingly found itself. A 
As if to confirm unwritten rule, each new archaeological campaign would bring new, pleasant surprise to the explorers of Mediana. Summer of the year 2000 brings new and remarkable discovery. Actually, in one of the squares, a bronze fence has been found very carefully put away. Better to say, hidden from somebody or something. Ovakav tip pograda poznat je iz antičke literature, naročito kod pisa Eusebija, koji je u svojoj crkvenoj istoriji pomenuo da su oko oltara postojale ograde, ali ih on tu navodi da su bila od drveta. Sličan tip ograda nalazimo i na spomenicima, posebno na Konstantinovom slavoluku, gde je u jednoj sceni prikazan Konstantin koji drži govor narodu, a nalazi se iza jedne ograde koja ima kancele i herme između njih. Isti takav tip nalazimo i na postamentu Teodosijevog obeliska u cirkusu u Konstantinopolju, gde se takođe vidi carska svita sa carem iza jedne ograde sa kancelima i hermama. These palisades on Theodosius Obelisk were most probably made of bronze, whereas on Constantinus Triumphal Arch they were made of stone. It is relevant to our story that they were made of blocks between which there were so-called herms, that is, pillars surmounted by busts of gods or some other images. Upravo takav tip ograde našli smo na Mediani. U samom nalazu sačuvana su tri kancela, i sačuvane su dve herme sa bistama, a sačuvana je takođe i deo ploče na koje su bile herma i kancel zajedno spojeni i to je zapravo činio sam ulaz. Ograda je načinjena od bronze i bila je vrlo jednostavno da se ona rastavi i sastavi jer se na njoj vide ankeri na kancelima i uške na samim hermama. Da bi se ona lakše sastavljala, još u to vreme, na poobodu samih kancela, bile su oznake na latinskom i grčkom, na latinskom slovo jedan ili i, a na grčkom slovo alfa, zatim latinsko slovo dva i grčko slovo beta i tako dalje. Znači, kao kada se danas prave prozori i vrata, isle takve oznake su bile i na ovim kancelima. Arkeologists are not ignorant of ornament symbolism and portraits on these herms. Panels were decorated with crossed ornaments. Joints of these cross strips are presenting medusas or lion's heads that are often related to the cult of sun. Preserved busts on top of herms are presenting god Esculapius, the god of health. They also present goddess Luna that has crescent on the top of her head, which makes it clear she is in question. According to the reconstruction, a palisade consisted of two parts with the entrance in between. On one side there were male deities, god of health, Esculapius, and god of sun, Sol. On the other were female deities, solar goddess Luna, Sol's pendant, and Hygia, pendant to Esculapius. For the palisade to be complete, there must have been two more deities whose identities are still unknown. It 
It is quite expected that God Esculapius appears in Mediana considering the fact that not far away from it, in Nice Spa, there are thermal springs and it could be argued that certain cult of healing was present there. Portrait Esculapa je izrađen u izvanrednom stilu koji vuče korene iz rane rimske umetnosti, a ona pak vuče korene još iz helenizma. Na samome portretu se jasno vidi u obliku brade u izradi kose da podsjeća jako na skulpture koje su rađene u vreme praksitela, znači u vreme četvrtog veka pre nove ere, i taj stil se jako mnogo koristi kroz celo rimsko carstvo. Za razliku od njega, kod predstave Lune, nalazimo jedan sasvim drugačiji stil koji jako podsjeća na portrete koji su rađeni u četvrtom veku nove ere i na njemu se jasno u samom obliku frizure, u uvojcima i u samom izrazu portreta jasno odvija taj stil. Prema nekim analogijama koje smo mogli da ustanovimo, najviše portret liči na ženu Konstantina Velikog Faustu, koja je, nažalost, ubijena 326. godine, ali isto tako ima izvesnih crta koji podsjećaju na Konstantinovu majku Helenu. Thus, explorers of Mediana are first to discover the original parapet panels. Would they survive the troubled times in history of this location if they were not carefully hidden? Who had hidden them and from whom? On the other hand, perhaps the most interesting question, to whom they belonged? Inevitably, Seeking for answers brings us back in past. Archaeologists have approximately dated Mediana fences. If the image of Goddess Luna veils a Constantinus wife's portrait, the palisade could date from before the year 326, when Fausta was murdered, that is, from the very beginning of 4th century Anno Domini. Nevertheless, it is not certain if the palisade was brought to Mediana straight away. It could have been brought there much later from some other center of the empire. This assumption is also supported by the discovery made in 1972. Altogether 16 damaged sculptures were found in a villa with peristyle. All of them were lying piled up in one of the connecting rooms. Have they been hidden from somebody as well? They present Esculapius and Hygia in several versions. There are also Dionysus, Aphrodite, Sassandra, Hercules, Mercurius and others. It would say they present a group of deities who share the same motive of savior and healer. The sculptures, like the palisade itself, present copies of some very important and well-known Greek ideals. Therefore, it is very likely that both palisade and sculptures were brought to Mediana from some other center at certain point of time. At present, it is very hard to say what would that point be. Opet hipotetično možemo da pretpostavimo da je u pitanju rimski imperator Julian koji je kako je poznato hteo da uništi hrišćanstvo i da ponovo uvede pagansku religiju zbog čega se i naziva apostata. On je u Nišu boravio između juna 361. godine i novembra 361. godine i u tom periodu mogao je izgraditi jedno malo svetilište u kome je bio Esculapi Higija, ali i druga božanstva koja su prikazana na ovoj ogradi. The sanctuary was most probably placed in villa with peristyle. Archaeologists have put together parapet panels found in 2000 and sculptures found in 1972 
trying to reconstruct the sanctuary after nearly 2,000 years. Could the sanctuary look like this? However, archaeological discoveries are bound to happen. Pagan sanctuary did not last long. Gothic tribes reached the gates of Mediana. Inhabitants of Mediana were burying their sanctities away from threatening danger, perhaps in the very last moment. As shown by archaeological discoveries, the whole of Mediana was destroyed round about 380 Anno Domini, when a huge wave of Gothic tribes immersed the Balkans after the battle at Hadrianopolis and destroyed a large number of localities on that territory. In a similar way, in Mediana, the sculptures in the city of Tomis, in Constanci, gde je otkrivena jedna ostava u kojima su one bile spakovane, kao što je to bio slučaj i na Medijani. One su uništene otprilike u isto vreme kada i mi pretpostavljamo da je Medijana bila definitivno uništena i ta analogija nam daje zapravo da tako datujemo i događaje na samoj Medijani. Parapet panels and presentations of deities were more valuable than life itself to the inhabitants of Mediana. And that is the reason why they were burying their sanctities while facing the invasion of plunderers. Archaeologists have excavated them after nearly 2,000 years. Since the discoveries of instigated value, they put them away again this time in a bank vault in Niche, just in case. Produced by Radio Television Serbia Science Educational Program, Science Editorial Team.